Good day ladies and gents, we're going to be continuing on now looking at timber structures and fire and we're going to run through the rational design of a timber beam when exposed to fire and as we've mentioned previously many people think that timber cannot have a fire rating because it burns but because of the charring behavior of timber we can actually have a reliable and dependable uh, capacity after a certain period of time whether it's a 30 or 60 minute standard fire we can know what capacity our beam has especially larger elements they have a re reliable capacity we can use so what I've drawn here first is just the bottom section of a timber beam so this would be our outline all the way around there is the maximum extent of our beam and it's exposed to fire so we're going to have a fire acting on it for a certain period of time and uh, as the fire acts upon it, the outside starts to char. And a char then progresses and it gets deeper and deeper. And so after a period of time, it'll reach this solid pink line here. That'll be our char depth. So we have a, a char depth that occurs. And depending on what species of timber, it might be somewhere between 0.5 millimeters per minute and 0.9, um, up or down, based on various different factors. So our char is going to, to develop into the section. But what happens at the corners, we also have a rounding effect as it uh, penetrates. You've got a one-dimensional charring here, but at the corner you've got a two-dimensional charring. So we do have a radius that forms and we can take that radius as about the, the char depth that forms. But to account for the radius and other factors we have what's a notional char depth there, a notional char depth. So that's in, to include these other factors that proceeds as the, the fire continues. But ahead of the charring front there's also preheating because char layers are um, solid black material, but there's a preheating of the material ahead of the char face, so it'll also weaken the material further. So we can't rely on that material uh, as well. So then what we have to do is reduce the section further, like that, and we lose another bit of, of material, and uh, the Eurocode recommends about seven millimeters for this uh, area of zero strength, which we, we can't rely on. And once we've reduced it by the notional charring plus this extra bit of um, heated material, then we have an effective section. Effective section. And this is now what we're going to use to carry our loads. So that's what is left over after the, the, after the fire has been acting on it. So we're going to have a look now at charring depth first time so we can get to the section. And if I just have straightforward charring, unprotected timber, it'll look something like that approximately. It's just a st straight line depending on which model you use. Um, as time progresses, the char depth linearly increases. But there are also other different models that um, occur, or that, that do exist. And for instance, let's say we had a protective layer, a board fixed onto the side of our timber. We want to get some extra fire rating out of it. There are other models, for instance, where you have, after a period of time, there is no charring until the heat penetrates sufficiently through our protective layer, our gypsum board, type X gypsum board or whatever it is. So now we have a time at which charring starts. And then for a period, the charring progresses at a slower rate because the, the passive protection, this boarding on the outside is keeping our timber safe. But at this time, the, um, the material ahead of the board is heating up. So when this finally fails, we have a time of failure, and the charring rate rapidly increases. Actually, in excess of the, the, no, the normal charring rate. So from here, it'll then rapidly increase at about four times the rate of the original and about double this rate because of the preheating effect. And that occurs until we have a charring depth of about 25 millimeters. So once we have enough material, protecting our um, uh, virgin material that is being affected, then the charring rate returns to normal. And then it continues on at about the same level, at the same rate as our linear charring rate there. So that gives an overview. Initially, no charring, and then the board is still in place, but then the charring rate is slower, 
and then board falls off, it fails, time of failure, then it goes up until we have our layer at time TA where it reaches a char depth of about 25 millimeters and then it continues on at roughly the same rate. And just, we're gonna quickly now finish off just looking at the stress strain behavior. So once we know what is our section looking at, what is our char depth, reduce that a bit more. Now, how does timber behave in fire? Well, in tension, so if this is our stress strain graph, if we load it in tension, it can carry the load, but eventually we have a sudden brittle failure. And then in compression, it's loaded, something like that. We normally approximate it sort of linear elastic, linear plastic region like that. And then we use that for our design, linear plastic, linear plastic, um, and then compression tension. So that will give us the values we use when it comes to design. So that gives us an overview of designing timber beams for fire, reducing it, very charring is very important. We get our, our compressive and tensile resistance. We apply that all together. And then finally, we can come up with the bending resistance or the compression resistance of our section. Thank you very much.